Our comprehension of the world arises due to collective and individual human experiences. Oof, what have they done? This is no good. I shouldn't say that. I mean, that, that's harsh feedback, but it's no good in the sense of it's violated our principle of never grouping the two words together that are the key terms. Look at that, due to collective and individual. They haven't even separated them. They haven't told me what the collective one is and what the individual one is. I get why you might not want to say what it is because you think, oh, it's too specific. It's too soon. Well, just tell me on a general level. Like, again, conformity, oppression, they're things that clearly relate to the whole text in 1984. You know, or if you're talking about, um, if you're talking about the crucible, a lot of you might be doing the crucible, that will also apply to that. Okay. So these are very general terms that then you can get more specific on and talk about, you know, the main character and their struggle. You can talk about that in the sentences that follow, but I think you should still say something specific in this first sentence. So that's where this student can really improve. They need to separate this and frame this sentence as a relationship. Okay. And the mirroring phenomena in our environment is just so vague. I have no idea what they mean by that. Okay. Now they have used the words of the question, but they've repeated them. And then they've offered something that is really vague in addition to the question. So again, it's still only around that band four range. If you want to go to band five and six, you want to hit those eighties and nineties, you need to come out with a strong statement that explores the relationship. Okay. So collective, the collective experience, you could be better than this. You could be more specific than this. I'm doing this as a, a basic example that would you know, potentially be at that band six level, as long as you follow up with the right things. But if you come out with something very specific, like, you know, George Orwell's 1984, um, explores the collective experience of conformity as inhibiting an individual experience of freedom. Nice and concise. I see how you're interpreting the question. You've separated the terms. Beautiful. Give me some more in the next sentence. Bring in context, bring in form. We're on our way to a band six. Okay, this is found to be emblematic. In, I don't have, really have a big issue with that introduction of the text. That's fine as long as you say something specific. The, the other thing is fine as well. Um, this is emblematic in, I mean, that's just personal preference really as to what works. Uh, George Orwell's dystopia, I would say dystopian fiction novel, be more specific with the form there. Okay. That's that student only had dystopia. Um, so they were, they only had that. So we want to cross that out and we want to replace it with something a lot more specific about what the text type is and the genre there. So dystopian fiction novel, perfect. That sounds a lot more sophisticated. It's a lot more formal and professional and forth 1984. So I'm going to be, whenever I'm referring to this novel, 1984, I'm going to be calling it by the digits 1984. So I don't have to keep writing out the full title, which is here in uh, proper words. So 1984, when you guys write, when you guys write a text in your essay, it should be underlined, which captures how a struggle to retain humanity. Well, again, if we, we'd want to say like something to do with individual, right? So humanity, like let's say individual autonomy results from regimes that seek to collectively dehumanize, right? Collective experience rather than to propagate itself as a mode of self-propagation or something, I guess, to, if you wanted to say. Now, oh, I didn't actually say what type of collective experience. We said it's dehumanizing the collective experience, but results from it that actively dehumanize. I guess we're saying dehumanize the collective experience. So we are saying something specific about it. We haven't really said what that experience is, although we are implying that it's an experience of dehumanization, right? Um, so that we could probably get away with that one, right. In terms of defining, I think the dehumanized kind of speaks to the specific type. And then we have that in particular, Orwellian protagonist, Winston Smith can, or, or yeah, this is a bit funny. Orwellian protagonist, Winston Smith's concern over retaining his ability to posit consciousness, to posit consciousness. I don't know about posit. I think that word's not correct, but to retain consciousness or to heighten consciousness or to exercise his consciousness, his awareness, right? Or heighten, um, signifies Orwell's warning. Well, allows, see, it, it doesn't signify his warning. It allows Orwell to warn, to caution readers, right? About the fragility of human freedom. Okay, sure. But then again, we would want to get individual and collective somewhere in those sentences. It's actually a pretty easy question um, because everything you basically write about will relate to something to do with the individual or something to do with the collective. Just make sure you're separating those out over time.